Rodney Satake as the new football coach at BYU. It's great to be back home. Kick is on its way. It is good! It is good! Yes! The Cougars hit it! I'm very lucky to be coaching these young men. Throwing on the run. Looking for Michael Sion. Michael makes the catch inside the 25-yard line. Tola Tari. Through another hole and into the secondary! This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Ken Garf Aura, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo, Utah, for another edition of BYU Football with Kalani Satake. We're back after a week off for last week's bye, and this week the Cougars are on the road up to Logan to take on Utah State. We appreciate the BYU fans joining us here inside Studio C tonight. It's really easy to be a part of our studio audience. Just request your free seats Mondays, 1 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, by going to byucougars.com slash Satake Show. And you can join the conversation on Twitter using hashtag Satake Show. It's your chance to get a question in for Coach Satake or Corbin Kafusi, tonight's guest. Just use the Satake Show hashtag for a chance to get your question on air this evening. And to get tonight's show rolling, please welcome back inside Studio C, the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Satake. <laughs> We've got props this week. I noticed. <laughs> we got one of you, and we got the old wagon wheel. Doesn't that just want to, you want to just buy a Coke when you see that? That's the, that's the idea. That's the hope. I know. You know? I didn't know it was going to be that big when they made the, uh, when they were doing the photo shoot. And so um, you could tell I was dressed for the occasion with my shorts, and you probably, they had to cut up my flip flops, but. <laughs> It's, it's practically life size. And oh, look at that. Speaking of props, oh, well, that's, yeah, that's the pause that refreshes right now. Coca Cola, there. drink one, right? Yeah. <laughs> we just made a commercial. We just made a there commercial you go. right now. Thank you. Yeah. So, now uh, I'll be wide awake for the show. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're assured of it now. After last week, we're assured of it now. Yeah. 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 So uh, th this means it's a, a special week for BYU football. It's an mm -hmm. in state week. Yeah, excited about going. going uh, first of all, I was just excited to have another game. Um, after the bye week, I, th I just know that uh, there's some things that you want to accomplish in the bye week, and we got it all done, but I'm um, just excited that we have a game this week, and, and uh, after the last week and the last game that we had, uh, we need to prove ourselves and, and show better, so looking forward to that opportunity and going to Logan and playing people that we know, and there's a good close connection with them being in state, and um, just excited, and I know that coaching staff very well, and Matt Wells is a good friend of mine, so so here we go again, you know, another rival game and uh, looking forward to going to Logan and, and having our guys show up. How did you, the staff and players, uh, use the bye week last week? Uh, a lot of different ways. I, I think, um, you know, we, we needed to get some recruiting done. And so we staggered our coaches where uh, coaches could go out and recruit. But then we had some coaches that were still here to run some of the practices. We lifted every day and we gave our players Friday. So we lifted Monday through Thursday, gave our guys Friday and Saturday off and just to do what they wanted. They had to go to school on Friday, but Saturday just wanted them to just do whatever they felt like doing, you know, and then take a little break. But um, we have accomplished a lot of different things. We wanted to get a good jump start on Utah State, and so we had some. Um, there weren't player run practices. There just were coaches that weren't all there, you know. But we had four. We have four great graduate assistants, and Dallas Reynolds that works with the O line, and Harvey Ungo works with the receivers and running backs, and then you have Vince Viola that works with the D line, and. And um, you have Jan Jorgensen who works the linebacker. So we were able to get a lot done with those guys stepping up and just giving them some pub because they're just graduate assistants, right. you know, trying to get their masters and, and uh, work, working on their coaching career. But um, they did a great job, and, and our, our players did a great job, and the coaches that were here did a great job. But we, we needed to get, uh, keep recruiting going because that's important to us. And uh, so we were able to accomplish a lot of different things. Our guys that got, got banged up a little bit, I mean, there were three tough yep. games, and, and they're physical games, and, and um, you know, we need some guys to heal up. And so. I think we're much better situation now going into this week than we were uh, a couple weeks ago. Sometimes after a rough outing, uh, a coach will say it's time <clears> to <throat> grind the guys and really get after them. And, and you saw a different need with this year's group. Well, I've been on both sides of that. You know, I think that um, there's there's a chance where you can you can do that, but uh, not usually after you have this type of schedule. You know, and and uh, you have to be realistic. And 
Uh, last 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 year, our bye week was handled differently than this than this year. And but it's nothing that's unique or out of the ordinary. It's stuff that that I've I've been a part of when, in other Power Five schools, you know, and and. Um, I've been part of it when we were in Mountain West and when I was coaching Mountain West and in Division One AA. So um, it all depends on what our team needs. And uh, we needed to keep recruiting going and needed our coaches to get out there. But we also needed to get a good start on, on Utah State. And then we just need a, a, basically a check of reality on who we are as a, per, as, a, as a team and as a program and where we sit right now. We're sitting at one and three. We haven't performed well uh, in the last three games and uh, all season, to be honest with you. And so. Uh, we, you know, just a lot, a lot of self-reflection on what we need to do to get better and make sure that we uh, give our fans what they're expecting on Friday. And that's, that's the goal. And I thought we had a good jump start on last week. And, and um, you know, just, just looking forward to our guys putting what we know their talents are on the field and, and making sure that it, it's productive and, and it's entertaining. We're 10 days removed from the Wisconsin game. That was a good team that rolled in here. They're now 3-0. They had a bye week this past week. Uh, top 10 team as they have been for a long, long time. And uh, I, I think, you know, you, you said, I think you used the word dominated after the game to say how they got after you. And that's just a really good football team. And I think they'll, they'll play well against a lot of good teams this year. Yeah, it's a good, good team, good program. And, and they, uh, they run a good system, you know, on offense and defense and special teams. They're, they're sound. They're a big group. I mean, they're, they're a big size group. And it was good for us to get to measure ourselves on, on, on some of the best teams in the country. That's uh, if you want to. Be one of the big boys yet to play them, and and uh, that was part of the deal there. And obviously, we're not really happy with how we performed because um, we're way better than the six points and, and than the score indicates. And unfortunately, nobody saw that, you know. And so we saw a few bright spots, but just wasn't consistent enough. And that's I've said it before, it's my fault, and I, I got to make it. I got to make it work. And and uh, that's a lot of that's why it's important for us to keep working towards Utah State and getting that win. And that's why we did that in the bye week with mixed in with some of the other needs that we had. You talked a minute ago about having used that to, uh, you know, time, time in the bye week to kind of self-assess. And where do you think you guys are as a football team through four games with that time to reflect? Well, I mean, our, our players called a, a player-only meeting. And they, they just, uh, I thought it was a good moment last week, you know, the Monday after the Wisconsin game. It's where our, our leaders stepped up. And then basically they shared their thoughts. And I don't know exactly what was said in the meetings other than, uh, our players came out with a little bit more motivation and they worked hard and uh, I've seen a, a, a change in them, you know, in, in, in the way that they're working and just really proud of our players doing that. I, I think that um, people expect the coach to do it, but it was nice and refreshing to have a, a player take the initiative and, and take control of this team. And, um, but, you know, when, it, when it's all said and done, that's, that's my responsibility to make sure that the players feel the, the need and that they do that earlier. And, um, you know, we're just hoping that this, it's not too late for that and, and that we can get this going this week. And just really pleased with the effort that the guys have given us. Just need to play assignment sound and, and, and smart football. So we went back to the basics in practice and just had to go back to what, finding what we're good at, you know, in, in all three phases and, and focus on that and then build off of that. So that's, that, that was the goal. And even dealing with some of the injuries and some of the issues that we have with our, with our team, that, that not everyone's 100 percent. And that's part of football. So we just move on with it. and, and uh, trying to develop a scheme and an identity that, that suits our talents, but also helps us become better and, and win games. That's, a, that's, a, that's what it's all about, winning. Do you think we'll notice a change in identity, do you think, from the first four to what comes next? Um, no, because we, we've done a lot of different things. I mean, Taysom last year, he was under center quite a bit, but he also did a lot of stuff in the gun. And um, I think we felt more comfortable with his needs and what he wanted to do, but also factoring in some of the stuff that we, the receivers that we had. And, Jamal being in the backfield this year is a lot different. You know, we, we although we have some young guys there, we, we have some guys that I think we can give them a little bit more responsibility and get guys the ball more. I think the main issue is, in offense is just sustaining drives. Um, you know, trying to get first downs and and get plays and and, get, and that that will result in, in points. Um, having 36, uh, 38 plays against LSU and 46 against Wisconsin, it's not going to give you very many opportunities to have success. And so. Uh, we, we wanted to have third and manageable, and we had that in Wisconsin. We just didn't, didn't uh, convert those third downs, and that needs to change in order for us to get more plays and to get more execution and get more, more points. For the break here, you, ref you, you talked about the players-only meeting that, that was held last week. That is a pretty good reflection on your team leadership, isn't it, at that point? It is, and, and, and um, I mean, it's one of those things where you can't manufacture. You can't, as a head coach, say, hey, why don't you go run a player-only meeting? It's something that I think the guys just draw upon themselves, and... And, um, you know, I think for, for what I do as a head coach is to try to facilitate all their needs 
and, and allow them to feel that this is this is something they have ownership on the team. But the, the final straw is on me, you know. So I, I, I am glad that the players are, are leading and doing all that. But um, you know, I, I the reason why the team's not doing well is, is my fault. I, I need to find a way to make it work, and I feel really comfortable with where we're at now, and and really really good about what we did last week and having a. It was a good time to have a bye. Let me just tell you that. I mean, I, although the fans wanted to see another game, it was really well needed for what for our program and what we needed to do to bounce back from those three losses this year. So the Kooks coming off a break, and we're heading into our first break. And as we do so, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. We come back, we look ahead to Friday's game with Utah State. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. No matter what stage you're at in life, you're always looking to take the next step forward. At Deseret First Credit Union, we want to take each and every next step with you. With low auto loan rates, you can be ready to see what's around every new corner. And amazing rates on home mortgages, so you can move up to something you've always dreamed of. Deseret First Credit Union, with you every financial step of the way. Membership and eligibility required. Equal housing lender. Cougar Nation, are you watching? It's the spirit of game day. The roar of 64,000 fans. It's the echo of greatness. The thunder of new beginnings. This is our house, our field, our team. And they are not ready for us. This is Brigham Young University. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the Pepperdine BYU wins volleyball game. Live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar sports. There's not so much a BYU Sports Nation dance, per se, but Jerem can't stand it when it's really quiet. You know, so he'll turn on some music, and then it's just like, you know, you know, just move the shoulders a little bit. He gave you a dance move? What in the world are you talking about? And I'm looking so just not cool right now. <laughs> he did that for the cameras. That does not happen. This this would be Spencer's. It'd be the stanky leg. Okay. Not mine. Spencer's. That's what we do. We just want to relax. Even though it's an individual position as a punter, it really helps the team for me to try and do it the best of my ability. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU at Utah State. 7 Eastern, 5 Mountain. Friday on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Nissan of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. We are back on BYU Football with Kalani Satake. And thanks again to these true blue BYU fans joining us in our studio audience this evening. Well, the Cougars are uh, back at it this week, off the bye and on the road at Utah State. And Coach Satake with a, a week off this past week and hopefully some rest and rehab for guys who were banged up. Uh, how's the health of your team coming into this rivalry game on Friday? I'm good. Much better because of the bye week. But, uh, you know, we, we'll have, uh, we'll have our, our guys that, that won't be able to go and, and uh, we'll just have to adjust. There's still some guys that are um, wait and see till the game day, but it's difficult to, to play a game when you haven't really practiced, you know, and so um, I, I think that we can probably count on some of those guys not being available, but uh, so far, the, the guys that have been able to fill in are doing a good job, and, and we'll see how they do it on Friday. Last four games against Utah State, to BYU's averaging around 33 points per game, and points are what you need more of right now. How close are you guys, do you think, to turning a corner on offense and getting those numbers to where you'd like to see them? I think we're really close. I mean, that's, that's – uh, but what else do you expect me to say, you know? That, that's uh, – <laughs> uh, but, I mean, just being optimistic, I, I've seen our guys play better, and, and I, I've seen some bright spots, and – it's just a matter of making sure that we, we uh, keep doing the, the good things and, and focus on the good. And, and uh, I said it before, just trying to make, if we're doing something well, just make sure the other team stops us first uh, before we, we uh, go on to the next thing. And, and uh, maybe it's a little bit more simplified and, and uh, a little bit more um, focused on what we're, we're, we're trying to achieve, but uh, I think it's needed. And that's on all three phases, but I think it's also opens up, uh, with that being the foundation, we need to be a little creative and find ways to, to get points on the board and find ways to get turnovers and create big plays on defense and find ways to flip the field on, on special teams. And that's with our, our, our 
our kicking and our coverage and then so far and even in our return game. So just looking forward to all of it coming together and, and having an opportunity to play this Friday. Utah State 2-2 uh, two and two on the year. Uh, they've lost the two P5s, have beaten two non-P5s, and they've been kind of an up-and-down team week to week depending on, uh, on who they're playing. 2-2 uh, two and two is their record right now, and uh, they've had uh, certainly moments which show a pretty prolific offense, as you can see by some of the numbers they put up. They've gotten had teams get after them pretty good too, so it has been a, uh, an up-and-down season for the Eggs. Yeah, and I thought, I thought after their last game against San Jose State, that was pretty impressive um, seeing what they, I mean, all three phases were click, clicking for them. Yep. Offensively, they were able to march the ball down and score. Defensively, I don't think they gave up a touchdown. That was on a pick six. And so um, defensively, they played great, and the special teams caused some turnovers. So, uh, you know, we, we got them at, a, at the a time where they're hot. And so, uh, you know, they're, they're, we're going to get their best shot. I can guarantee you that. And going up into Logan, it's going to be a heated game. I know their fans are excited about this, and so are we. So we're just looking forward to the challenge. They led that game last week 55 nothing before uh, San Jose State scored. QB for Utah State's Kent Myers. You've seen enough of this guy now to know what he does and does well. Uh, what do you think about number two? Well, he's looking a lot more comfortable as a quarterback, and, and I think he's got a good, he's got a good uh, feel for the, for the system and for the game. Um, I know that we've seen a little bit of the other quarterback, and I think that's just by design on what they're doing. But um, it, the scheme, it, it fits what they, what they have on the, the talent on their team. And, uh, they do a lot of different looks, a lot of misdirection stuff, and, and so uh, we have to be really assignment sound on, on defense in order to, to defend them. And, uh, but, you know, there, there'll be some opportunities for us to make some plays, and, and uh, we have to take advantage of it. And it starts up front. Our D-line needs to perform against these guys, and, uh, and it's hard to, going against an athletic quarterback like Kent Myers, but uh, I think our guys are going to be ready. And we've had good challenges along the way to lead up to this game. And you see in the clips there what, you know, they, they like to focus on. It's a lot of short game in terms of throw and uh, him making plays with his feet. Yeah, and they do, they do a lot of different things by spreading the ball out, and they share it with so many different receivers, so many different looks, and the quarterback runs the ball as well. So they do a lot of run-pass option, and, and uh, this is a lot of stuff that we've seen, and, and, uh, but they also have a physical line, and there's some, uh, some familiar names up front that we've seen before that's been in part of our program. So uh, we know those guys on a personal level, so we're looking forward to the game, and I know they are too, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Their San Jose State game really showed it, but Coach Lamb told me Monday that uh, Utah State had some, has some of the best special teams packages he's seen uh, really in all phases of the game, from the place kicker, for how they do their kickoffs, to they've blocked three punts already this season. So special teams has been a game swinger for them. Oh, yeah, and they've caused some turnovers on, on the kickoff. I mean, just uh, pooching the ball up there and, and uh, a lot of... They, I think they recovered two of those those uh, kickoffs and yep. um, you know, the block punts that's, that 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 can turn a game for you quickly and uh, they they they're able to feed off of the momentum that they create on special teams and it's a huge compliment to their coaches and what they're able to get their guys to do and and they, they, there's a lot of high effort guys on the on the on the, on the special teams there at Utah State and uh, we like to pride ourselves in special teams as well. I know Coach Lamb has done a great job with it and. Uh, just, you know, it'll be a good matchup for our guys. That's a look at Utah State uh, coming up on Friday. Coming up on our next segment, we're going to be joined by defensive lineman uh, Corbin Kafusi. Uh, how long did it take uh, for you to kind of realize that uh, Corbin would be uh, uh, best suited on the gridiron as opposed to the hardwoods for you? Oh, uh, when I was at the basketball game. And so I, <laughs> I, uh, what I, I, knew, I knew Corbin. So I was a graduate assistant for uh, Steve Kafusi uh, back in the days when Gary Croton was the head coach. And I worked with with, the, with Coach Kafusi, but I also got to know his family and, and the babysat those kids, you know. So, <laughs> literally babysat them. Literally, my <laughs> wife and I babysat them, and and uh, it just it was nice getting to know Steve and Michelle and such a great uh, great family. And so I, I think I've had a connection with him a little bit earlier, but it was good to see him at the basketball game. And I, Corbin, would probably tell you, I just kept yelling, "That looks like a good defensive end right there," and in warmups and stuff like that. And, <laughs> As he's going through the layup line. Yeah, That's but, by I mean, the end. but I mean, the guy this will tell you that if I see a big guy at the grocery store, I'm going to say, hey, you know, let, let me see how you look in the tank top and let me f see what you can bench press and run. And so I'm always consistently recruiting and trying to get guys, get guys on our team. But he's, uh, he, he fits what we need to do. And, and he's got that in his blood. Obviously, you've seen Bronson and what he does. And they have an athletic family with Alexis being a basketball player, too. And we have another one coming home from his yeah, mission, Devin. I think, next week, you know. So. Wow. Um, yeah, so this is a leave my poster alone. So. <laughs> no, but there's, 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 that's a great family. Corbin is a great young man, and I love having him on the team. He's he's one of our leaders, and he's he's a 
He's a, he has big make, a big play-making uh, ability, and, and, and I'm looking forward to him doing some stuff, especially on Friday. All right, Corb is coming up next. As we head to break here at Ken Garf Volkswagen of Orem, we're excited to announce our new dealership will be opening its doors in November. Visit our new showroom on University Parkway. Ken Garf, we hear Cougs. When we come back, he's the brother of an NFL player, the son of both the BYU coach and the possible future mayor of Provo. He's Corbin Kafusi. He's next on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. You have everything you need. Yeah, I think so. Well, you forgot this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey. You can do this. Thanks, Dad. Let's go, Gerald. We're gonna be late for the All game. Right. Well, heard the letter. Gotta go. Thank you for watching Cosmo for us this weekend. Now remember, you only like sparkling water, room temperature. On, Make sure he wears go. his sweater. Gotta go. Go, go, go. Yeah. Now we are gonna go see you again. I just feel like I've made a really deep connection with all of the guys. have got to stay pumped. At times it can be tough, but you do have some really good people here, great teachers that are willing to help you out. The BYU TV Sports Post Game. BYU and Utah State. Friday, after the game, on BYU TV. I'm Ronai Laulupututau, and you're watching BYU TV. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake with your host, Greg Rubel. All right, so welcome back inside Studio C here at BYU TV. Hashtag Sitake Show gets your questions in for either Kalani or Corbin Kafusi. Q&A segments with both guys are still ahead, so get them in now. Hashtag Sitake Show. Well, his is among the first families of BYU football, as the Kafusi name is among the most prominent in the current generation of Cougars. Following in both his father and brother's footsteps at BYU, he's making a name for himself here in Provo and hopefully beyond. Please welcome into Studio C, junior defensive lineman, Corbin Kafusi. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming in. Hey, happy to be here. Kalani expressed uh, just some slight concerns that the chair would be good for your frame and everything else. I think we're okay? I was, I was a little worried sitting here because I've had some mishaps with chairs before. <laughs> really? Do tell. Uh, well, <laughs> broke a lot of chairs on my mission. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I mentioned uh, the Kafusi family name, and so much of, of your identity is tied to those who've come before you. You're okay with that, right? Because you're proud of the Kafusi name and what they've done ahead of you. Absolutely. I think that's one of the big things that, you know, I kind of look to for strength because it's like, okay, I've had, you know, brothers, uncles, my dad, my mom come through. Everyone has come through. So I, I kind of love it. If you had to tick off all, the names of all the relatives, and it could be brother, father, cousin, who've played college athletics, how long would that list be? Oh, man, I don't even know because 
you know, I'd probably have some ants that did some, you know, just some <laughs> interesting sports or something in here and there, so I can't even say. Uh, the family connections that we're most familiar with are, of course, dad, Steve, who's a player and now a coach, and, uh, and brother, Bronce. But there's more than just I – mean, those, those are the ones we all know. But uh, Alexis played, yeah. and, uh, and, and even if others haven't in your family haven't gotten to this level, they've been athletic their whole lives, haven't they? Yeah. You know, we're, we're a pretty competitive family. So, you know, even if it's just doing random stuff around the house, it gets pretty heated. <laughs> a- athletics is involved. <laughs> Kalani said uh, that, that he was literally – a babysitter for you in your younger years. Is that, is that, you're, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, sorry for all those diapers or whatever, <laughs> you know, paid, I'm, paid babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> I was paid. I mean, not paid enough, but <laughs> how are the twins doing by the way? You, you, you have twin siblings. They're great. Yeah. My little sister is enrolled in school here now and my little brother actually gets home next week. So, and he's the next in the line of Cougars, right? Yeah. He's going to come and play football. So, I can't wait to rough him up a little bit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of humble him, come off the mission from a high. <laughs> What's he going to be, by the way, position-wise, do you know? I, I don't even know. Hey, I think we're going to ask right here, what do you think? <laughs> he'll be tall, and, and there'll be a Kafusi, so he can gain weight, and we'll see. But there, there'll be a place. I think he'll be on defensive side of the ball. Okay. Uh, Brother Bronce is uh, playing with the Baltimore Ravens. Mm-hmm. Uh, how has his season gone? I know they just suffered an injury on the D-line. Brent Urban, who's been playing ahead of yeah. him, is out for a long time now. And uh, So what do you know about his current situation and how he's doing? I think he's doing really well, and so, you know, he did pretty well in the preseason and because Brent Urban's a great player, and so he hasn't seen as much time in the regular season, but now with this injury, I think he'll probably have a lot more time, and it'll be, it'll be fun to see him out there. You guys went and played in the Superdome in uh, New Orleans. You guys got there on a Friday. On a Thursday night, I got there ahead of you guys. I got to go to the Superdome and see Bronze play a lot of snaps yeah. as the Ravens took on the Saints in that preseason game. It was fun to watch them out there. Yeah, I was, I was so jealous to, to see all the BYU people that went and saw them because I was like, geez, I was just a couple hours behind, but glad somebody saw them. Yeah, we did. It, yeah. it, was, it was good to see him <laughs> repping. Uh, you are a football guy and a football guy only right now. Uh, last couple of years, we talked about you playing both sports. Uh, what went into the decision to, to focus solely on football, and are you going to miss basketball at all? You know, I think you just you love you know, anything that you do. And I think with football, it's something that I love to do, and also I just it kind of fits my personality and the way I kind of look at things. And so, yeah, it's hard to say bye to basketball because everyone says it's – it's a hard thing for anyone to let go of something they've been doing for so long, but at the same time, I'm just so happy to be playing football. Kalani, somebody who's as good, so good to be a D1 basketball player and still do what he does in football, you've got yourself a heck of an athlete, obviously. Oh, yeah, of course. And there's basketball, um, you know, the guy that plays basketball, and it's natural for him with his body position, his movement. Uh, obviously, he's gained a little bit of weight since then and muscle, right? And so, um, but his, his length and, and his uh, the leverage that he can use in the game is, it's uh, there's not a lot of guys that ha- are his size that play the end. And I think, um, you know, there's there's a lot of plays that he's going to make in the future. He's made in the past, but there's way more to him. And we're like I said before, with him, we're just scratching the surface on on his on his uh, his ability. I mean, he's got so much more ahead of him. And I think he knows that. And, and, and having an older brother that's played the game and, and a father that played in the NFL and played at BYU, I think it, that all plays into it who he is as a person and, and it's a huge compliment to his family and what they've done with him and he's a competitive kid and so he's uh you know I think it fits perfectly him playing D end and, and it's a good match to the other side with Sione Takitaki playing there so uh, you know hopefully we start making big time plays on Friday and, and, and uh, just let him loose and let this big frame take over the game. <laughs> well you are a football guy now for sure before you leave basketball you're probably going to be the only Cougar that ever retires with multiple wins and be undefeated up in the kennel in Spokane against Gonzaga. That's quite the accomplishment. It's, yeah, definitely. Just some <laughs> great memories up there. Yeah, every time you went up there, you got to win. You're like, what's the big deal? We win every time we go I know. Up there. I'm like, what? <laughs> Come on, why don't we always do this? <laughs> uh, your mom, Michelle, is uh, in the running and is, in fact, one of the final two candidates for the mayor of Provo. She got through the primaries, and she'll be uh, up for election here uh, in November. Uh, have you thought about uh, what kind of life changes it might mean for you and your family if uh, we're looking at the next mayor of Provo right there? Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm just thinking better obey the speed limit, you know, <laughs> just, <laughs> and better not cut anyone off on the road. You know, got to help the old ladies across the street. <laughs> Don't want to get in trouble with the law. No. <laughs> Has it been a fun thing for your family? Yeah, it's been really neat. You know, I, I would say that. A majority of our family, other than my mom, we don't know a ton about politics. Like, we don't keep up 
as much, but she does and she has a passion for it. So it's been neat to kind of rally around her and what she loves to do and just be like, we're here to help. What about her would make her a good mayor? I think just that idea in general that she has so much passion for it. She, you know, grew up here in Provo, has raised kids here in Provo and loves Provo to death. You know, she has no side agendas. There's no political, you know, side agenda with her. She just truly loves this place and wants it to be the best that it can be. Wants to serve. Exactly. Yeah. All right, more with Corbin coming up in our next segment. Uh, we've got more with uh, Corbin, including Q&A. Your questions for Corbin on social media and our live studio audience ahead. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. 160,000 miles. That's, on average, how often you'll use your car insurance. But what if you could get help with more, more often? And you could also save a couple of bucks on clothes or at restaurants. Skip the line at the DMV. Even get rescued roadside. You can when you're a member and your insurance is AAA. Insurance that's not just insurance. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Do you know why I hate humans? They have something they don't deserve. And what does a human do with this gift? He destroys his own kind. He strikes, he steals, he profanes, and he kills. It's better to be dead than be a slave. Love is worth fighting for, but only if it's yours. This is why they sent us. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Honda of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. I always like to check in on our Cougars in the NFL. Kyle Van Noy made 11 tackles for the Patriots on the weekend. Daniel Sorensen. Continuing to be active for the Kansas City Chiefs, Jordan Leslie's first catch was a heck of a catch he made for the Cleveland Browns on the weekend. And Jamal Williams is a good understudy to Ty Montgomery there in Green Bay. And not listed, but on an NFL roster is this guy's brother, Bronson Kofusi. We're with Corbin Kofusi, and uh, Bronson spent the weekend in England. He did. You know, it was his first time over there, so him and his wife got to go out there, and it was pretty neat. He loved it. So the Ravens played at Jacksonville in, uh, in London, right? Yeah. At uh, Wembley Stadium. It's kind of funny. Uh, I think it was your mom that posted a uh, pic over the weekend. So your dad, Steve, played uh, a game back in London way back in the day when he was with the Eagles, right? Yeah. And so your mom went ahead and posted, uh, I think, an Insta uh, that showed your dad, Steve, and your mom, Michelle, in England posing and then super impo- or, uh, next to Bronson and Hillary, who were there this past weekend. So separated by many, many years, you've got a father and son having played games, football games in England, of all places. Yeah, it was, it was pretty neat to see that. I just wonder, I hope my dad's team didn't do as bad as Bronson did. But <laughs> <laughs> There we are, dad Steve on the left and uh, brother Bronson on the right as uh, he spent the weekend uh, overseas, and your mom posted that uh, just on the weekend. Kind of a ne- neat little touch there. All right, to the here and the now, and uh, we got the wagon wheel behind us, meaning it's Utah State Week. How important is Friday's game in Logan to you? It's huge. I think this is going to be a big game for the team, and just everything about the game is huge. Not only that it's Utah State, but this is coming off the bye week. This means everything to us, so it'll be big. Kalani, what would you say? I mean, every game, the next one you play is the most important game you play, but is there a special meaning to, to what happens Friday in Logan from what you want to see from your guys? Well, it's just more of the urgency on, on what we want to prove on the field as a team. And I know our offense has a lot to prove. Um, I know Coach Detmer does, and so does 
our defense and, and our special teams. And as a group, it's a program we all want to. We just want to show up and play our best game. And, and uh, what a great time to do it and after a bye and having some self-reflection and having our, our leaders step up and take ownership of this team. And I'm um, just looking forward to everything working out, work, working out in, our, in our favor and just uh, really happy for this opportunity to play this game. 87th uh, Wagon Wheel meeting, uh, BYU's 48-35-3 and all-time, 8-2 and two in the last 10, 30-5 and five in the last 35 games. Just some trivial notes about the Aggies and BYU. Uh, Bronze, or Corb, how would you feel the defensive line has performed through four games, and what are some objectives you'd like still to meet as a group this year? You know, I think it's kind of the same thing what Coach was saying is that there's definitely some things we can improve on. You know, we've had some moments where it's like, okay, we've, we're getting this, but at the same time, there's just so much more that we can do as a defensive line and a ton of room for improvement. And so hopefully with this game coming up, we kind of show that, you know, after looking over the film and kind of seeing what we can do better as a defensive line or as, as an individual that we come through and, you know, kind of make a big difference in that category. There's Corb with his first sack of the season in the Wisconsin game. Uh, you, you fashion yourself a fisherman. You love to fish, right? I, I do like to fish. So you just had a week off, a bye week. There was some football involved. Did you have a chance to get off and just get off and do some fishing just to, just to chill out and, and get, get, get back to your senses? Sadly, no. You know, I, I, especially because I've taken up bow fishing, which is totally different than my usual, you know, hours out on the river. But it was kind of, it was a good week to, you know, just chill, but didn't want to get that relaxed. What kind of fishing? Bow fishing. Uh, yeah, a bow and arrow, you know, you have a rig attached to it. For real, we're talking like, <laughs> when oh, you said yeah. that, I, I was thinking bow and arrow, but that's... Oh, it's, it's the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, have you had success with this? Oh, yeah. You know, I can go out in an hour. It's, you get way more fish, and they're all this big, and so you go out in an hour and get three or four of them. Are you intrigued, Kalani? I'll eat the fish. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to eat these fish. <laughs> these are the bad ones. Uh, so, uh, players only meeting, uh, Kalani referenced last week. Um, why was it good for the team at that time, and what did you get out of it? I just think it's a pivotal time in our season. You know, we've come across three really tough losses, and especially in the manner that we lost. You know, these aren't, you know, one or two points, kind of how it was last year. These were big losses for us, and so it's easy for guys to lose vision of what we're doing you know it's either go off of what the coaches are trying to tell them or go off of what their teammates are trying to tell them you know it's it's kind of in human nature to scatter when things go bad and so the players meeting was good to kind of rally everyone together and be like no we're still on the same track and we need to do this and a bunch of different guys could speak as they wanted to i guess right yeah yeah it was really good to hear from just a whole variety of players you know young guys old guys veterans walk-ons anyone all right, time to let uh, Cougar Nation get a word in edgewise with uh, Corbin Kafusi now. We're going to go to Q&A, and we'll start here in the studio. Our first question is coming uh, from here in Studio C from uh, Russell Alley, a.k.a. the Grizz Father. Russell, good to have you here. Hey, Corbin, how's it going? Good, man, how are you? Hey, good. Hey, so since your family is uh, all pretty much uh, huge sports uh, fanatics, um, do you guys do anything outside of sports when you guys get together, or is it all sports-related uh, uh, family feuds? It's, we do a lot of things. We love games, like card games, you know. Oh, catchphrase is a big thing that we play at our house, and it's pretty heated between the guys and the girls. They always think we're cheating. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing we do outside of sports is eat. So that's always a good family time. <laughs> and uh, if, if Michelle can handle feeding a, room, uh, a house of Kafusi, she can handle running the city of Provo, maybe, because she's had a lot to deal with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Way. Yeah. Uh, Twitter for our next question from at to BYU underscore Bob uh, for Corb. How important is it to get pressure uh, with just four rushing, if there's just four rushing at one time? I think it's huge because you're going to get a double team somewhere in there, but then the rest are going to be single blocks. And so pressure is what allows you know, our DBs and our linebackers to kind of is see what's going on in the field and to create turnovers or opportunities for that kind of stuff. So if there's no pressure, quarterbacks at this level can just pick you apart. You know, as Wisconsin's quarterback was great at that. He was able to see things and just get the ball where it needs to go. And so pressure is kind of everything for us. 
Okay, our next question, Twitter, uh, at Borgett, Ty R. Uh, how does uh, the Utah State rivalry compare to the Utah rivalry? And he said, as a USU alum, I know that they, uh, they hate BYU as much as anyone. What do you think about it? <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's a big-time rivalry. And I guess I didn't really know that until when I played up there for basketball. Mm. And it was quite an arena to play in for, for just basketball. And so I can't even imagine how it's going to be like for football. But, you know, a lot of people care about it. And I think it's kind of brought the attention to me and to all the players that we have to care too. All right. Corbin, thanks for coming on tonight. Great segment. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, that's Corbin Kafusi, everybody. Thank you for Corbin. Thanks, Garth. Thanks, Garth. Thanks, Garth. Our improving things for our customers. To see how, come visit our showroom located on University Parkway. Ken Garth, we hear Cougs. After the break, your questions for the Cougars head coach from the audience and social media with the hashtag Satake Show. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. I went to BYU with the intention of finishing my degree. Along the way, things got a little bit busy. I always had that idea that I was going to go back, but as a non-traditional student, I just felt that uh, that opportunity was not going to happen until I explored what BGS really offered. The BGS program gave me more flexibility and gave me the education that I wanted. As I was walking to the podium, it uh, was almost surreal. I don't regret getting my degree through BGS. Lou runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU San Diego women's soccer game. Live Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar sports. Next time on American Ride. Honesty of American politics has fallen into corruption. It's an era of dishonest leaders. The disregarded voice of the people rises up once again. Will a new line of presidents be able to break from the crooked ties of corruption? These men have been cutting a bad deal in a back room behind locked doors. That's next time on American Rise. I'm Tizan Chroma, and you're watching BYU TV. Bo takes his drop, the righty steps up in the pocket, throwing on the run, looking for Micah Simon. Micah makes the catch inside the 30 25 yard line of Wisconsin. That is the exciting play of the game presented by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan, innovation that excites. Hodge to Simon, and we are back with BYU football with Kalani Satake here in Studio C. That last play we saw was from the Wisconsin game, and uh, Micah Simon's been a pretty reliable receiver for you. Uh, big play there, and he's had a lot of third down conversions as well when he's caught the ball. He has been, and, and he's been... Uh... A really productive and, and just a, a guy that we got to get the ball more to, you know, so uh, Mike has worked extremely hard last year. He redshirted and uh, got faster and bigger and, and uh, showing and I think he's hungry to make plays, but he, you should see him block downfield. He does all the little things and all the details that it takes to be a great wide receiver. He does it all. So uh, we need to find ways to get him the ball more and, and uh, I think we'll have better chance of getting more plays and getting more points if he gets the ball in his hands. Sounds good. All right. It's that time of the show and we Turn the uh, citizens of Cougar Nation over to Coach Satake going one-on-one -on -one with the head coach, the Cougs. Your questions for Kalani in our weekly Q&A. And we'll start right here in studio. See, we've got uh, Jennifer McGill at the mic. Hello, Jennifer. Hi. So my question is, is there any special thing you guys do before or in halftime to fire up the team? Anything special? Yeah. Um, well, we come in, there's all the, like, the orange slices and all that stuff <laughs> that these guys can, can, you can eat. The guys go, we try to remind them not to eat too much, you know, but um, other than getting, um, getting uh, you know, the, the, the drinks and, 
and sitting down. We meet as a staff separately, offense and defense, and then we go out there and the, the, the coordinators will go out and, and address the players and tell them the things that we were doing wrong, things that we're doing good. And, and then as a, as a coach, you know, we bring them together and try to get them riled up. But I think for the most part, the players will take ownership of that and our strength coach and their staff do, do it as well. So uh, it's not just uh, me being the cheerleader. It's, uh, we kind of do it all together. And um, there's some times that you would, you know, you would uh, be a little bit more heated than other times. So uh, without going into much detail, yeah, that's, uh, some changes need to happen. And I don't have a long time to explain how it needs to happen. So. <laughs> Uh, I've been given a small amount of time, and, and uh, you know, sometimes the delivery is a little loud, but that's part of football. All right, to Twitter for our next question, hashtag Satake Show from at Salute Mex, I think is the way you say it. Uh, what should we as fans be most excited about going into the game on Friday night up in Logan? Um, I think there's just from what we are seeing with our old line and with our, our offense, I'm just really excited our offense getting better and showing better. That's, um, I, I feel really confident with our defense, and although we had some issues on against Wisconsin, I, uh, I definitely know that what will help our defense will be to stop the run, because if you stop the run, then you force teams into third and long and then taking advantage of those, creating big plays and turnovers. Um, so that will be the focus on defense. But offensively, um, you know, we, we, we haven't seen all our weapons. You mentioned Michael Simon before, and there's a lot of guys that deserve to, to get the ball more, and that's Jonah Trinman, Ula Tolotau, and you know, Squally Canada, there's a lot of guys um, that, that you'll see on offense that, that, that play well, other than Matt Bushman that we've seen quite a bit. But there's other guys that can contribute to the team and help us win games. And I, I'm, you know, I'm forgetting to mention a lot of them because I'd probably be here and name them all, all 30 guys that will be on the field that will help us in some way or another to help us win, game, win the game on Friday. How is Ula coming along as well? Was we good for him? It was good. I mean, it was good for all those running backs. And I've been really pleased and been spending some time with them a little bit and seeing some of the improvement they're making in their running tracks and then being able to with their keys and their reads. And I think it all works together with our, our old linemen. And um, I think it'll be it'll be really good for us. We needed this break and need to focus a little bit more on individually each running back and their strengths and then what their eyes are looking at and what you know, where, where, where we can help the old line with their blocks and um, and help the running game. So I, I've been, it's been nice to have it specialized coaching with all those running backs. But we did it also with our receivers and our tight ends. And, um, you know, there's a lot of guys that can help us win games, and um, we're just looking forward to those guys playing on Friday. Back to our live studio audience for our next question. Tasha Sabi is with the coach. Hey, Tasha. Hi, coach. Um, if you could give any former BYU football player one more year of eligibility, who would it be and why? Just one? Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> somebody you could see play again. Not even again. Just oh, who would you like maybe see in their prime, or who's who's somebody that you'd go man? Who would I like to see um, play again? Jeez, uh, that's hard for. I, I can't pick one. It's like. Um, Don't want to pick yourself. No, <laughs> I, I definitely would be on the bottom of the list. So I, 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 there's a lot of guys that I admire that were great players, and I, I, I could name them all. I mean, three of them got their jerseys retired, you know. So, but there's a lot of great guys, and and but the guys that we have on the team are good enough. We can we can win with those guys and. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see them play. And, and, you know, the past doesn't help you win games, but it can help motivate you. And that's what we're trying to do here at BYU. And if I, if I were to bring anybody back, it would be Lavelle to bring back and, and to be with him. Thanks, Tasha. All right, more Q&A coming up for the coach after this. Fans, if you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List. Order online, pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com slash click list for details. More of your questions and Kalani's answers coming up next. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. I would like to congratulate the men's basketball team on their big win this weekend. I know that one of them is here. I want you to stand up. Stand up. It's not me. I'm not on the team. Then how do you explain this? I bought it. 
He's on the team. Come on, Jake. There's no need to be humble. I'm, I'm not on the team. No midterm if he makes this shot, if he misses extra homework. Jake, 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 Jake. Gear so legit, they'll think you're on the team. BYU Store. We don't want a patient to have to see us every day for the rest of their life. We want them to be the expert in their own health. It's really awesome for us to see at Red River these patients going from five good days a month to 25 good days a month, and they have a lot more control over their condition than they did before. If you have symptoms such as depression, fatigue, headaches, or an inability to concentrate, you may have low thyroid caused by Hashimoto's disease. Red River Health and Wellness can help with a treatment plan remotely or at any one of our locations. Get ready to see the good here on BYU TV. Volleyball fans, be here live for all the bumps, sets, and spikes as the Cougars face off against Pepperdine tonight at Seven Mountain. Then, head over to the soccer field to see BYU battle it out against San Diego. Don't miss the live broadcast starting Friday at Seven Mountain. Watch your favorite BYU TV shows here and catch up anytime on BYUtv.org or the BYU TV app. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Volkswagen of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. All right, you see the wagon wheel there, and we've got the wagon wheel here in studio as BYU gets ready for Utah State. It is time for our final Q&A segment here on BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Hashtag Satake Show to get your question in for the coach tonight and every week. And let's get right back to our studio audience. And we've got uh, Brenton Farrell coming to the mic. Brenton Farrell, I'm with uh, Coach Satake. Hey, Brenton. Hello. Uh, hey, Coach. So, you know, we talked, or you talked a little bit about how there was a players meeting this past week. Um, when you were a player here at BYU, did you participate in any players only meetings and kind of what happens in those meetings? What, what were they like? Um, <clears throat> a lot of things. I, I, we had a bunch of them, you know, and the, I think we met quite often as players and, and as, as a group. And um, a lot of it was kind of motivating and uh, sometimes really aggressive and loud and a lot of fun, but um, most of it was to reflect on what we're doing and call guys out and, and also have guys step up, you know. So I, I think it's good. So, so everyone expects me as a, as a head coach and our coaching staff to correct young men, but it just means more when it's coming from their peers and uh, when it's coming from the guy that's in the huddle with you that's uh, pleading for you to do your job and to be responsible for your accountability to, to, to the team. I think that matters, and it carries on just, just not on the field, but this, it goes off the field and academics and everything that they do, and uh, that's what makes this place special, you know, and, and makes our program special. So I'm glad it happened, and, and I'm looking forward to those guys doing more of those meetings. But I, I mean, don't want to just make, make it sound like that's going to be the saving thing for our, our team, but it's definitely part of, uh, part of uh, something that needs to happen. And uh, I just, those guys, they, they know that this is their team, and this, um, Corbin's one of them, that they know that this is their group, you know, and, and, and um, they know that the, the important role that they play in it, and it's a good time for the leadership to step up. So that's basically how I see it. All right. Brenton, thanks for the question. Uh, to Twitter, hashtag Zitake Show. This is from at Ron Bond 2015. What do you think <clears throat> is more vital in turning around the offense, a better run game or improvement in the pass game? I think both. I mean, I don't want to be greedy or anything. Okay, let's do it all well. You know, <laughs> let's, let's, um, let's, let's throw the ball effectively and utilize our speed. I, we have one of the fastest guys in, in the country in, in Jonah Trinaman and Bo Tanner and those guys that, that are a lot of speed and just having, being able to spread the field out a little bit more. But I think you also need to pound the run to, to keep teams honest and um, the, the well-balanced attack. That's what we want. And, and, and uh, you know, so hopefully we can do that and keep, keep teams uh, honest and keep them on their heels. And, and when you do that, you get things rolling. And that's what we're trying to, trying to accomplish as a coaching staff and as a program. I mean, we have the guys that can do it. We have Michael Simon, all these great athletes and great receivers and tight ends and, and a physical line with a lot of experience. So there's really no excuses. It, it just look, it needs to happen and it needs to happen around Friday. All right, studio audience and Twitter audience, thanks for your questions. Good stuff. When we come back from our final break, a final look ahead to Friday as we close the show with Kalani. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. 
Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU is here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Heard mother. Gotta go. Thank you for watching Cosmo for us this weekend. Now remember, you only like sparkling water, room temperature. Make Come sure he wears on, a sweater. Let's go. Gotta, gotta go. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Yeah. Go Cougs. <laughs> Come on, Cosmo. All righty. All right, sweetheart. We are gonna go see you again. Let's go. People open up to me. I look at some of these people as I'm doing this interview and they open up so amazingly and completely. To me, a complete stranger. And it blows my mind. Invariably, every single person has something meaningful, something important to share that everybody can learn from. I just feel like I've made a really deep connection with all of the guys. have got to stay pumped. BYU at Utah State, Friday in Logan on radio. We're underway at 4 o'clock Mountain, 6 o'clock Eastern on TV, 5 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Mountain. So BYU Radio, BYU TV have you covered Then the Cougs and Ags Right at 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 8 o'clock Eastern, up there at uh, Maverick Stadium. All right, let's uh, wrap up the show with a final <laughs> Twitter question. <laughs> we go to social media, and uh, at Joseph Felt, felt that he should ask this question. Uh, what's the best improvement you saw from the offense over this last uh, week and change that you've had to get ready for Utah State? Um, I would say the, uh, the old line did a great job at, and, um, and blocking up front against a really physical D line, you know, I, I think that uh, especially on a couple of drives, we saw some good some good moments, and um, just like to see more improvement, more consistency in, uh, as a group overall. But uh, it's good to start at the O line, and, and uh, I've asked those three seniors that start in the interior O line to, to take take ownership of the offense, and you know, those those are three big bodies that have played a lot of games, and. I think they, their, their voices can be heard, and, uh, and I think it will have a huge influence on our team. You know, I'm, I'm personally excited for Friday because of what's gone on already and had the fact you've had a week off. And I know you're fully focused, but are you also intrigued and excited for what you guys can show you on Friday night? Do you feel that too? I, I do, and, and I mean, not, not to be negative or anything, but it can't get any worse, <laughs> you know? So it's like the, 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 uh, we got to be better. That, that, and and, um, and our, everyone expects it. Our, our, but more importantly, our team expects it, and... And they're anticipating a, a, a good improvement and a good showing. And so our, our, I think our fans are, have been waiting for it. And, and trust me, we're just as impatient, you know, as coaches. But the guys, from what I've seen already with the way they've been working, it, it should be a good thing for us. All right. Well, best of luck on Friday night. We look forward to it. Fans, we'd love to see you here in our studio audience next week. Go to BYUCougars.com slash Satake Show at 1 o'clock Eastern next Monday, 11 a.m. Mountain Time to reserve your spot in next Tuesday's audience. Stay tuned for ninth-ranked BYU Women's Volleyball versus Pepperdine on BYU TV. We'll talk to you next Tuesday, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain. For Corbin Kafusi and the coach, Kalani Satake, and the cutout, I'm Greg Rubel. And this has been BYU Football with Kalani Satake live from Studio C. We'll see you next week. Growing up, I don't remember there being a lot of art and culture in Provo. Ten years ago, I was asked to be on a board to revitalize downtown. I am a co-founder and host of the Rooftop Concert Series, a summer series in downtown Provo using our own local musicians. The point is that it's really accessible. It's not only about making our downtown vibrant, but also to say Provo's changed and there is something for everybody now.
Super Tuesday rolls on in prime time. The ninth ranked BYU Cougars riding a 44 game win streak against West Coast Conference opponents since November of 2011. Pepperdine trying to snap that streak and a 10 game losing streak of their own against the Cougars. It's the Waves and Cougars next on BYU TV. Tuesday night NCAA Volleyball live on your television screens with some top 10 mojo, no less. Ninth ranked BYU, 13 and one overall. Back on their home floor to host the Pepperdine Waves who enter with a record of nine and five. Early in West Coast Conference play, BYU doing what we thought they would do in the Bay Area. Two quick wins over San Francisco and Santa Clara. Pepperdine also perfect. 1-0 in their WCC slate. We welcome you wherever and however you're dialed in. Great to have you with us on BYU TV alongside the pride of Santa Barbara, California, Steve Vale. I am merely Spencer Linton. Steve, this is from the book of cliches, your prototypical trap game for BYU. They are staring down the pipe at 